Hi, this is Tyden. Now I want to go through with you um, a, a sample case study. I've had this come in three times in the last week. People that are buying a new house to take advantage of the lower property values but can't sell their current house. So they're going to take advantage of the stronger rental market right now and uh, keep their existing house as a rental. So I'm going to go through and just uh, show you from scratch how you would create that kind of a plan for a client. First step is always create new client or plan that gives us a blank plan. And this is a purchase, but it's a special kind of purchase. It's a second home purchase, really, right? Because you're buying a second home. Anytime you buy another property, uh, it doesn't matter if it's investment or uh, uh, for a beach house, it's still a second home. So we click second home purchase. And we put in the contract price for that purchase. And we'll say it's $200,000. Now, when I click on the add details button, I want to ask, I'm going to answer the question, what's the value of my current house? And the current house is worth $150,000. This is the house that I live in today. What additional amount do I have from savings or investments that I could apply towards buying this new property? And let's say I have $20,000 that's available. How much would I like to put down? I'd like to put down 10%. So see, I own a house today worth $150,000. I have $20,000 in savings. I'm buying a new house for $200,000 with 10% down. That means I'm going to need to put down $20,000 and borrow one eighty. dollars Very simple. If you just flow with the logic, what's the title here? Uh, buying a second home, keep old home. Remember, this is just your plan title to make it easy for you to remember which client this is. We'll give this client a make-believe name. We'll call them, uh, uh, let's see, Laura and Tom Parker. Okay. They have gross income of $98,000 a year. Uh, what's their tax bracket? Gosh, let's see. Uh, they live here in uh, North Carolina. They're married filing jointly. That puts them in the 25% uh, federal. We have a seven state, so that's 32. So pretty easy, 32%. And uh, let's go in and add a current liability. Now we know they have one liability, right? Because they have that mortgage. So I'm going to come in here and say, let's add the mortgage. And what are the details? Uh, we have a property uh, that's worth $150,000. That's the property I own right now. It's a primary residence on a 30-year fixed. I have it financed with uh, Wells Fargo. The original loan amount that we borrowed on it was $125,000. And that was $3,1,2005. And our interest rate was 6%. And our current balance on that mortgage is, uh, let's see, $108,000. Okay. So I can put in the uh, taxes. We'll just put in 1.1 1 .1 and the uh, uh, homeowner's insurance uh, 0 0.3. And the MI has, uh, has phased out at this point um, because we're below that 80% uh, threshold. So we'll leave this just like it is, right? So, hey, we're done. I mean, we could put other debts and liabilities in here if they have them, but I'm going to keep this simple and clean. What we really have is someone with a current mortgage that they have today, and they're looking to buy a new property. So I go to my borrow tab, and when I get to the borrow tab, I can see current liabilities, Wells Fargo mortgage, and I'm going to say, no, I do not want to pay off that current mortgage. I am going to keep that mortgage in check. I can see I've got 256 payments to go here. I can see my payments, et cetera. It's already set me up with a couple of options here. And I kind of like these, you know, if, if this is just a short term uh, time frame uh, where I'm going to be in this house for five to maybe seven years um, and I'm looking to then maybe sell the other property and sell this property, then I like a seven year arm as a possibility. Um, I haven't set up my uh, widget uh, for this as a default. So we're going to say this is going to be after... Um, 70 or 86 months, uh, first adjustment cap 2%, then adjust every 12 months, uh, max adjustment of 2%, uh, 4, 12, margin of, we'll just say 3, and we'll base this on the one year LIBOR, we'll say 0.4. Now, remember, if I go into defaults over here under my profile, I can set this up. I just hadn't set this up for the seven-year arm, so it'll automatically populate that. I won't even have to go in if I don't need to. 
has all the defaults set up. But let's say I don't have the ability for this client to do an 80-10-10. So I'm going to need to then do what? A 90% first position at, eight, at 180. And I'm going to update my interest rate here maybe to 3.5. And then, you know, this is a new property, right? So I'm going to come in and say, what are my tax rates on it? 1.2 and my homeowner's insurance, 0.3. It's pulling my defaults and I'm going to have some MI, right? So I'm going to put in here 0.65 uh, and I'll hit the save button. Okay. So again, see how quick that is. I just got my current liabilities right here, right? And I'm going to borrow on a new property, $180,000 at 3.5%. The alternative I'm going to look at is a 30-year fixed. Uh, same thing here. Uh, I'll set this up as a uh, 90 uh, I'll put in and update my rates here, 4.5. So I've got a one point savings between the seven year arm and the 30. I'll go ahead and give this a title, 30 year uh, fixed. And uh, on the payment, I'll just double check to make sure I'll kind of copy everything down from the seven year arm because I want the same MI, same taxes, same insurance, and we're good to go. So the only thing we've done different here is we've got the existing mortgage we're keeping and we're showing a new mortgage. So I got to come down first and say, can we handle the closing costs? You've got 20,000 cash. If you don't buy the house, you'll still have 20,000. If you go with a seven year arm and we have 1732 in closing costs, and let's just say we're gonna do a 1% origination fee on both of these, then I can tell that the client's gonna to need to come to the closing table with an extra $3,532 in both of these situations. So I can go through if I want and say 23,532, and 23,532. If I want to do it this way, this will just go through and uh, even that up so that I can see this is what I'm going to have to bring to the closing table. And to be fair, 23,532, I want to go ahead and say I have to have this available to do this because if I don't do it, all right, that money's going to stay somewhere else. And if I do, it's going to go into both of these properties, it's going to go into this property. The closing cost is the same, whether it's a seven year arm or 30 year fix. So when you're telling that story to the client, you can say, look, does this make sense now to you? Yeah, I know you said you had 20,000. Do you think you could come up with 23,532? If not, we'll need to back down the down payment, adjust the MI, et cetera. They say, no, we can do that. Okay, so we've got 23,532. We can see here the difference in the impact, doing nothing, doing something. Both of these products are different with different rates, but the closing costs are still the same. Where do we see an impact? We see an impact on the actual payment itself. So right now you're only spending $925 a month, right, on that existing mortgage. You're now going to be spending $2,082 a month or $2,185 a month. So isn't that cool? I can show that on the seven-year arm, my total borrowing is now $288 and my total out-of-pocket expenses for interest and taxes and MI and insurance for both properties and my total principal for both properties. I'm able to combine these into a nice story. And you're going to spend an extra eleven fifty seven a month with a seven year arm, and an extra a twelve sixty on the thirty year fixed. And with the annual wealth impact, now this is just showing you what this is: your closing costs. This is your monthly payment. Now, if they said I'm going to rent it for a thousand bucks a month, you can do that math in your head. Then you're going to spend about one fifty seven out of pocket, or you're going to spend about two sixty out of pocket. But let's say the client is actually going to be able to rent this for twelve fifty a month. I can come right in here to monthly rental income and put in 1250. And then I can decide do I want to use the 925 payment, you know, which is going to go through and just assume that we use one baseline payment and I like to in this kind of a situation go with a fixed monthly payment. I'll take the highest payment of these 3 and say if you can make this payment 2185, you could make 2185 as a payment on all 3 of these scenarios. Okay? Now, I wouldn't use it here though. Now, this is a little tricky. I want to show you why. On this scenario, this is what I'm paying today on the old 30 year fixed. This is what I'm going to pay on either of the seven or the 30 year arms. And the reason I'm going to leave this at 925 and bump this to 12 or to 2185 is because I'm buying a new property. I have new expenses on top of that, and I've got new rental income on top of what I'm spending today. So a little bit trickier, but this is the way I would uh, tend to uh, base on this. And uh, quite honestly, if you want to, you can simply say, we know what the other property is going to look like. Let's take this away, drop the current liabilities, 
and just compare the seven year arm to the 30 year fixed. I can see the payment differences. So you could approach it from that direction with the client, but the having the um, current liabilities does allow us to see the financial impact of what? The closing costs, the payment difference for the client, and then the annual wealth impact over time. So let's see if this makes uh, uh, sense for them below. So they're getting 1250 in, in uh, monthly rental income. Uh, their target time frame is seven years. Their estimate of their property appreciation rate, we're going to use 1.5. And because they're not looking at saving any money, they're just looking at, at uh, their spending over this seven year time period. We'll put the savings rate at zero since it's really irrelevant. So now I can look on this scenario, this first scenario, my property I own today, which is worth 150, will be worth 166,596. But notice if I buy a new property and I get one and a half percent appreciation, then what do I have? I have appreciation on both of those properties. So these two properties, either one of these scenarios together will be worth 388,723. And again, that's the real uh, uh, beauty of this thing. The mortgage liability is 86,203. If I just stay in my old house and keep it, if I buy a new house and rent that one out, I've got two mortgages I'm paying, but the debt for both of those mortgages together, 239,283. Equity. So I can see my interest payments. I'm making much higher interest payments here, right? Less on the seven, the 30, because I have a 1% lower rate. And I have no interest rate risk over that seven years because this is fixed for seven years. I see my taxes, H-O-M-I-M-I, -I, see, much, much uh, larger here. Principal payments, also larger. Rental income, so I've got 105,000 in rental income at 12.50 a month for seven years. And that is going to be coming in as a positive. So I'm gonna make net payments of 77 in my old scenario, but only 69 in my new, or 78 here. That's because that rental income is offsetting uh, a big chunk of those expenses. So from a wealth impact, does this make sense to me or not? If I sold these properties in seven years, am I better off? Well, let's look at the wealth impact. If I sold this house in seven years based on my current scenario, my net equity, 80,393, minus my payments over the next seven years, 2656. So less than 3000 in positive equity. With a seven year arm, I have net equity of 79,576. My wealth is improving by 76,920. With a 30 year, my wealth is improving by 64,000. So again, the beauty of the arm analyzer now is I could go out and say, well, what if they stayed there for 10 years? The software is going to look at a worst case scenario for these arms and say, now the balance really tips to the 30 year versus the seven. The 30 year is going to be worth 86,000 in, in net wealth versus 68 over that 10 year period. So I can very easily come through here and just play around and see what my break even is. At nine years, the 30 years better. And at eight years, the seven year arm is still a better solution. So if their target time frame is really eight years or less, I'd go with the seven year arm. If their target uh, time frame is really seven years, then I, I feel more comfortable going with this. We're talking about almost a, what about a $12,000 difference. Cash at closing, I do have 23,000 cash at closing here. I got a nice buffer. I have no cash at closing in these scenarios, but I am picking up positive cash flow over that seven year period of 8675. Because again, I'm focused really on spending right now. That's what's important to this client. They wouldn't be interested in repaying because their goal is to what? Buy themselves some time, six or seven years, let this property appreciate, let themselves get off the hook in the future. And they're not really interested in savings per se, again, because this is about managing their cash flow and uh, getting into a new property that they think is going to appreciate for the future. So don't know any other way, any other tool out there that would allow you to do this type of an analytics on a side by side basis uh, and show you the financial impact over time uh, for this particular client. But play around with it and just know you could simply do this as a new purchase and leave the old pro the old property off. But you can include that new property and uh, put it in here and show the financial impact over time by leaving it as an existing debt and then simply adding the new property. And to do that, the only difference is that you're going to, on the Manage tab, when you set this up, set it up as a second home purchase. If you do that, we'll assume that all of your existing liabilities that are mortgage related are going to continue to be in place and not paid off in the future. Hope this helps. Have a great day.